Good afternoon. Let's talk about sustainability. Sustainability is increasingly discussed in our industry. Regulators talk about it. Sustainability professionals like myself talk about it. And I will summarize today some key points about sustainability in our industry. Today, I want to focus in particular on the relationship between sustainability and financial performance. Because most likely, and especially if you're a public listed company, your investors are already doing so. They look at three central factors, non-financial factors, uh, in measuring the sustainability and societal impact of an investment in a company. ESG stands for Environmental, Social and Governance. Investors are increasingly applying factors as part of their sustainability analysis to identify material risks and growth opportunities. ESG, though, is often viewed through negative examples and scandals. A recent example, Rio Tinto, the global mining giant, uh, destroyed ancient Aboriginal sites that eventually led to the company CEO falling. The company had crossed an ESG red line according to its shareholders. I think from a gambling company's point of view, there are three levels of sustainability. At its simplest, you have to take social responsibility seriously because not doing so might put your license in jeopardy. Not having your license in good standing is, of course, not sustainable in the long run and also not in the short. So when we develop this thinking a little bit further, if you have sustainability in your DNA, then your company is probably better equipped to comply with new regulations that are introduced with the objective to reduce social harm. Chances are that your company that focuses on sustainability is better equipped technically, operationally, and organizationally to meet that kind of changing demands. There is a lot of consolidation in the industry and the big global companies are often active in a, in a large number of markets. Where there is a high need to adapt to comply with varying set of regulations and standards. Cross jurisdictional compliance is easier when sustainability is incorporated as part of the business DNA. The second level, customer retention and a sustainable business model. Some regulators go a little bit further than beyond the mere legal obligation and in fact suggest that can be a business advantage in doing so. For example, the UKGC website says this, proactively interacting early enough and in the right way can help somebody keep control of their gambling and you will retain them as a customer. Instead of them choosing to opt, to opt for self-exclusion or closing their account entirely. In the long term, this approach is more sustainable for your business. What I like about the Gambling Commission's observation here is the relationship they draw between sustainability and retention. Something that we are perhaps most accustomed with, talking about it in our daily business. So let's have a look at the definition, the meaning of the verb sustain, the cause to continue for an extended period or without interruption. Looking at this definition, you would think that sustainability actually comes close to customer retention management. We don't want our customers to feel bad about gambling and lose them. And I'd like to give an example of another industry. eBay. I think this is fascinating. A company the size quite a large, quite a few large online gambling companies cares enough about their customers to make sure they are not bidding more than they are comfortable with. They are actively encouraging responsible buying and setting limits. How do they set these limits? Do we ask that question often enough and when should we ask it? These are among the most burning compliance questions, but I would like to consider it from a sustainability point of view, especially since there's probably not any regulatory obligation to ensure that your customer 
does not buy too many books or phases online. So if eBay still does this, it's possible that it's done because it actually has a positive impact on their bottom line too. Maybe they have noticed that after an extraordinary buying or bidding spree, customers have become inactive. Maybe they have felt bad about their shopping experience. A company wants their customer to feel positive about their use. And I think there's a lot to say about this mentality that companies in our industry can put in practice. So the third level, the fact that you have sustainability in your DNA and that compliance at the heart of your business and that you retain your clients because they feel safe when playing at your websites leads to superior financial performance. This is not just my opinion. This is shown in numerous studies regarding the correlation between sustainability and stock market performance. For example, this study, the Center for Sustainability and Excellence researched 642 sustainability reports and found that the top ESG scorers indicated a strong correlation between financial performance and sustainability performance, especially between comprehensive sustainability strategies, sustainability reporting, and a culture of transparency that had positive effects on revenue. Another study concludes that the company's commitment to ESG reduces uncertainty and risk in publicly uh, in risk and publicly increases its reputation amongst investors. Nonetheless, this study also argues that it may not be the case for industries, and they name a few tobacco, gambling, and alcohol. So why is this? Part of the reason can be, of course, that institutional investors have certain sustainability standards. Some are not investing in gambling stocks at all. The so-called negative screening is applied, what, ex what ex excludes stocks based on investors' ethical values. So certainly those institutional investors who are investing rather do so in companies that have a robust sustainability approach to reduce ESG risks. The American Gaming Association argues, for example, that CSR work can be seen as an intrinsic value of a company's strong relationship with its stakeholders, and that robust CSR portfolios generate a sound stock portfolio. So, in this presentation, I've identified multiple levels of competitive, competitive advantage that sustainable, responsible thinking provides to the gambling industry even sustainability that goes beyond narrowly defined compliance obligations. First, cross-jurisdictional compliance is easier when sustainability is incorporated as part of the DNA of a business. Second, customers who don't play more than they're comfortable with are likely to stay your customers for a longer time. In the long run, that's going to be a better relationship both for the customer and for, from a business point of view. You have long-term, more loyal customers based on your efforts. It's good for business. And finally, in the stock market in general, a strong correlation between financial performance and sustainability performance has been shown in multiple studies. I haven't seen a study yet about the correlation between sustainability and financial performance specified to the gambling industry. And it would certainly be interesting to hear why that correlation exists in the stock market in general and how it, how it is present in gambling. So let's, Pierre, join me and we can discuss this.
Hello, hello, uh, Elizabeth. Sorry Hi. to keep you waiting. Sorry to keep you waiting. How are no you doing? Problem. Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm doing great. Uh, it's a really interesting uh, presentation to to uh, to listen to uh, here, Elizabeth, uh, and uh, interesting to to uh, to hear your points. Uh, you know, as I was listening to this, I was thinking um, to ask you actually. Uh, you know, with the, with the ESG matters that you talk about and sustainability and so forth, um, obviously in the, the agri industry have really taken this uh, seriously now, in, in, it feels like in the last couple of years. But do you think that the agri industry is currently doing enough? I think at the moment you see a shift of companies indeed taking this more uh, serious. And when you look at the sustainability strategies that people put out there there are companies that focus more and more on being an entertainment industry mm. with a very strong focus on uh, sustainability to support that and i think that's definitely a very interesting um development because if institutional investors uh, might exclude the business based on um having a risk to the health or prosperity of, of people um mm. If we can shift that towards, we can provide sustainable entertainment. Mm. Uh, how would that work? Yeah, exactly. And I feel this is something that is echoed a lot in the discussions that I am having uh, at the moment with the various uh, industry leaders. They they keep um, they keep going back to this that we are an entertainment led industry, and that is the key kind of to the uh, to the longevity of the agri industry. Is that correct? Is that how you guys see it as well? That's that's why. Yes, I think mm. the company focuses on uh, on uh, entertainment mm. uh, because there is no harm to everyone instantly. There are cases that we have to be uh, um, very catering for and, and create those robust mm. RG frameworks to minimize the social harm. Yeah. Um, but when the industry gets compared to tobacco or, or something it's it's exactly. different because there the the harm is is imminent yeah and it, it exactly I, I, and i hear this a lot as well that uh, you know traditionally that uh, the industry is being compared to tobacco or tobacco compared to alcohol and, and like you're saying that um, those industries are something that is directly harming you <laughs> imminently right whereas uh, um, gambling if gambling if provided in the right format is uh, uh, something that uh, can be just as entertaining, uh, like you're watching your Netflix, for example. Uh, I guess that is more the comparison where we where we want the industry to go towards, right? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. And then having that entertainment angle, of course, that's supported with this robust sustainability frameworks where you have yeah. all the safety nets um, built in and, and being very aware like of, of of your of the harm that it could potentially be doing but exactly. from the first moment it's it's an entertainment yeah exactly because it's uh, you know you, you shouldn't leave the elephant in the room there right there, there, there is issues within the game industry as in uh, uh, there are problem gamblers that we do need to take care of even if it's a small part of the industry and, and the majority are entertainment driven there is still this uh, part of the industry that is I, I guess for us to make this argument that it's an entertainment led industry uh, we really, really need to take that uh, issue seriously, right? And I, th mm. I, I think sometimes maybe there is a perception issue amongst the, the public that uh, uh, thinks that perhaps the industry isn't doing enough to protect uh, uh, the um, harm from harm from gambling. But um, in in my opinion, at least in the last couple of years, uh, I, I think this has uh, been an incredible progress that the industry has done, right? And, Maybe mm -hmm. that isn't reflected sometimes in the uh, on the investment side, right? Which is uh, still very cautious to invest in. Uh, investors are cautious to invest in the agri industry for ESG matters, like you're saying. Do you think it's just a matter of time mm -hmm. before that perception changes from the for the uh, investors' uh, point of view as well? I think that the industry has to speak with one voice. If you look at the, the trust of the general public in the in gambling, in gambling operators, it's actually really low. Mm. And we need to to really go to the bottom of how can we make that better? How can we provide more yeah. uh, trust in, in the products we were offering? I mean, you have been doing many podcasts and listening. Like, <laughs> it, It's a very in, innovative industry and uh, regulation is, is, is a very high level. Mm. 
Um, but how can we show that to our customers that they can be safe and the business will take care of them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, it's something that we have noticed uh, as well here in the background is that uh, when you know you mentioned the podcast that, that we are producing, for example, and um, the podcast sometimes becomes quite popular amongst the uh, shareholders. In the uh, if, if I do a podcast mm-hmm. with a listed uh, company CEO, for example, like we, um, we did the Pontus Lindvall or Betson the other week. That podcast became quite popular amongst the stock market community, right? Mm. And, and having that kind of dialogue with the um, with investors is potentially something that uh, should be quite important, I guess, from the industry. Maybe that has been lacking previously. Yeah, how how companies can be more transparent and be more informative mm. about how they they see the, the non financial um, factors in their company and and the social factors that so-called ESG mm. frameworks, mm. you can communicate them in many different ways. But I think indeed uh, many companies focus on on the financials. And when there's this talk with you, which is more informal, uh, talking about yeah. whatever the, the culture in the business and how they retain their, their employees and um, mm. give them the opportunities to grow with them, the diversity or equality uh, standards. Yeah. This is this is important to them, to the investors increasingly. So yeah, there, mm. there are different ways. And I think it's, it's very nice that that um, you create these podcasts for companies that maybe don't have a yearly uh, sustainability reporting uh, produced mm. or uh, sections on their, their website where the investors can find all that information. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting. And uh, finally, as well, Lisbeth, I wanted to ask you as well. So um, if we go back to around 2015, this is uh, where a lot of the gaming uh, companies were at their peak in, in the stock market. Um, all the, most of the all-time highs is from around 2015. Um, and since then, the, uh, the shares have kind of declined a bit. And now they're obviously on the way up again. But um, even though uh, many uh, operators and suppliers are trending towards all-time highs in 2020, the um, share price is still a lot lower than it was in 2015. Uh, do you attribute that to uh, ESG matters and, and follow up question to that is, do you think that uh, as we move forward that we will, uh, that we will uh, recover uh, again, so to say, the, the, um, the stock market um, belief in the industry? Yeah, it's a very good question. And of course, there's no one single answer mm. to it. I think yeah. a lot of companies have entered the market after between 2015 and, and now. So the, um, the share is, is, a, is a lot a thinner, so to say, with a lot of companies joining because a lot of them are are in the in the Nordics on the Nasdaq. Mm. So yeah, that that may may have contributed, and then the markets regulating and more uh, awareness and uh, focus on the social impact part. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure it yeah. can have contributed, but who yeah. knows. You know, <laughs> nobody can predict uh, the stock market. Except the stock market analysts, as they, <laughs> uh, <laughs> even though they fail most of the time too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, brilliant, Lisbeth. It's been uh, really interesting to, uh, to have this conversation, actually. It brings a little bit different perspective as well. Uh, you know, we are very uh, operationally focused, uh, most people in the agri industry, and we don't really have the perspective sometimes of what's going on outside of the industry with the, uh, how the investors are viewing uh, the industry and so forth. So it's very interesting to have your uh, perspective on this. And I think that it's something uh, we should follow up on as well and and, um, and communicate uh, even more because it's, uh, it's obviously detrimental to the uh, to the future um, yeah. uh, of the IGM industry. And also from an ethical point of view, you know, us as IGM employees, uh, you know, um, uh, understanding that we are in this industry uh, uh, that is heading towards uh, um, uh, a place of more efficacy and in the way we deal with our players and so forth. So it's an interesting conversation, something definitely um, uh, most people should see, I think. So thank you, yeah, thank you for that. Absolutely, and and also the different uh, continents. Where there was a lot of discussion about mm. uh, how the US is is seeing the ESG points um, compared to to Europe and the different uh, investors in the different continents. So yeah, mm. for sure, lots of good stuff to discuss. Yes, brilliant, Lisbeth. Thank I, you. I wish you wish you a lovely uh, rest of uh, your Friday, and uh, thanks for uh, tuning in today as well. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank Perfect. You. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.